So is it too early to be talking about a crisis? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to get inside the mind of Mauricio Pochettino. It's an anxiety driven, scary place right now. But the good news is that he and I have got some ideas on how to get us back to winning ways. I've got four ways that I think we might be able to get back to winning ways and maybe, just maybe, sneak it into those European places. Now stick with me here. If you want Chelsea to improve as much as I do, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel because we all need some support right now. But look, let's get into the first reason. I want to talk about injuries. It's obvious, isn't it? The first thing we can do is get all of our players back onto the pitch and fighting ready to go. I think um, the medical department was rightly called into question recently about how many injuries there were and it just doesn't seem right. There's something that just, it just seems a bit off, doesn't it? And I don't care what they need to do. They can invest in some state-of-the-art machinery. They can wrap the players in cotton wool. Hell, like, I'd even be happy to invest in some acupuncture or something. Like, that's literally how desperate it's gotten. Anything we can do right now to improve the injury situation, I would do it. I think if you looked at the injury situation that we had for the Brentford game, the list is countless. We've got a third of our team injured. Like, we have a, th a squad of 30 players and a third of those were injured. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Like, James and Gusto yesterday are starting right backs, both on the bench, not fit enough to start the game. And you're thinking, what's going on there? De Sassi had to cover her again. Enzo, before the game, pulls up. Weird minor injury, apparently, Mauricio Pochettino says. He has just had the birth of his child as well, so congratulations to Enzo for that. So you can very much understand why he would want to miss the game, if that's the reason. But it seems like it was an injury. And he's our best player in midfield, isn't he? And then, again, you're talking about very, very good players and very good performances. Mudrik, again, seems like he's got a very small injury. He keeps getting these niggles, doesn't he? But I really do think he would have been able to make a very key impact and use his pace against Brentford yesterday when they were using that low block and get in behind so to miss him is just ridiculous Broyer again can't seem to stay fit and that's just an absolute disgrace and Nkunku arguably our best player full stop not in the squad and that's really really concerning getting these players back on the pitch is the key thing for us and we need to get them all fighting fit because if we don't then we're not going to get back to that pre-season form that saw us at beat teams like Brighton and Newcastle but let's be honest it's about way more than injuries just now Let's get on to the next point, which is about our attack and how we're not being clinical up front. The game against Brentford and a lot of our other games this season are permeated by missed chances. We're averaging over two expected goals per game and yet we're only scoring 1.3 goals a game. And that underperformance shows that it's a general lack of finishing. It's not just on one player, but generally across the squad. We're not getting our chances and that's a big problem. So who is to blame here? Like, I think the first person you go to is Nicholas Jackson and he's underperformed his XG by three goals. So he's missing a lot of chances. He should have been up there towards five goals this season already. He's only on two and that's with 668 minutes, nearly seven games of play which is just not good enough, isn't it? We knew this guy was raw and uh, we look at the statistical data to back up that signing. It looked like it was a smart move and wow, in pre-season, he was absolutely tearing it up. And you can understand from that form why they've chosen, why Pot just chosen him to be the starting number nine. And look, before this game, it kind of made sense. Against Brentford, Cole Palmer was far more advanced than him and that kind of tells you everything you need to know. His positioning is, is just not quite right. We don't need a striker to come back and uh, be involved in play anymore. Like, it's not really what he's there to do. And there were so many crosses against Brentford that just didn't have a guy on the end of them. And I feel that Jackson should have been that guy. And his lack of results mean that we probably will have to go into the market. You've got to remember as well, bro, you can't stay fit. Jackson himself is going to be out for the African Cup of Nations for the majority of January and the start potentially of even February. And so it looks like our recruitment team are going to have to go out and look at other options. Tony and Osserman are the ones that seem like the most obvious choices because it seems like Lawrence and Wynne Stanley are now focused less on the age profile, less focusing on those young, young players, but more about immediate results. And for me, like you look at Tony, Tony's a Brentford player, you know, isn't available because of this betting ban, but he got 20 goals in 33 matches. That was a massive over performance from 18 expected goals last season. So he's getting the chances and he's proving that he is really, really clinical. But what I will say on the finishing, and again, I said it quickly at the start of that, it's not all Jackson's fault. And like, look, let's talk about one example in particular. Cucurella goes through from an unbelievable pass from Cole Palmer. 
and he puts it straight into the goalkeeper's hands. He should have scored that one. And look, Sterling was behind him as well when there were so many of those chances in the first half against Brentford. You just got to think the boys have just got to slot some of those home. So it's not all about one individual anymore, but it's about generally our finishing across the park. It's just not good enough. And it's still a hangover from last season. Before I move on from the attack, I want to talk about the third reason. And it's going to be talking about young players taking over from some of our experienced ones. The key example that I want to use here is Raheem Sterling. He is our highest earner and he looks great in some games. Burnley being the one that really sticks out for me. He dominated that game and he was by far the best player. But there's so many chances and so many opportunities that he's not getting. And he's just not justifying being the highest earner at Chelsea anymore. So we need to move on long term. And I think Cole Palmer is the one for me that really exemplifies the new era at Chelsea. Like he's got nearly double the XG of Sterling per match and three times the amount of expected assists per game than Sterling. He's already got two goals and one assists in a faltering season for Chelsea. And he's had half the minutes of Sterling. So you just got to be saying he has to be starting week in, week out. And he's showing up players like Sterling who should be getting those kind of numbers. And they're just not. But I tell you what, he's not the only one. You look at players like Mudrik, for example. He looks like he can take the pressure as well now. Misha has got two goals in 300 minutes for Chelsea. That's an, an insane amount. And he creates more key passes per 90 than Raheem Sterling. And... He has more expected assists as well. I mean, it's just brilliant. And then you look at players like Angelo, absolutely smashing it in France. Do we now think that that might be a bit of a, a strange and a wrong loan move? This guy could have been in and around the squad and potentially could be performing better than players like Noni Madawiki, who, for me, yesterday was a bit absent. Other than that amazing chance, the one that he came in from the right-hand side, cut into his left-hand side, shoots and really hits the top of the bar, you know, in between the bar and the posts. He was so, so close, close with that opportunity. But look, if you're being honest with yourself, other than that, he didn't really do that much in the game. And I think for me, it's about more than just what they do in attack as well. You look at Sterling and his movement yesterday. He was so far advanced. You saw that by the average positions. You know, he was so far up the pitch, the highest player again. And we kept saying that. But he's not tracking back and he completely lost his man for Brentford's goal. And really, you've got to blame him there. And for me, it's desire. Desire comes into this and that comes into my team selection as well. Like if Raheem doesn't want to be there and isn't going to put in 110%, then there are players that will want to do that. And I think Poch has got to get his arm round Sterling and got to say to him, you've got to work really, really hard because if you don't, you're not going to be in the team. Going forward, let's be honest, the best attack for me has got to be Misha, Broya and Palmer. Like, those are the best guys, and they have to be signed when they're fit and available. You've just got to hope that they all can stay fit and available. But look, the attack is dysfunctional, and I'm really interested to see what you guys think. Who is your best starting front three, and what do you think of Raheem Sterling? Have I been a bit too harsh there? I just think overall, with the amount of wages that we're paying him, we've got to expect more. I'll tell you what really worries me for the fourth and final point is beating the low block. I just don't know how we do it. We're so, so predictable, aren't we? And if you look at the average positions here, Chelsea was so far advanced, Brentford was so deep in the pitch, and you just knew how they were going to play because teams analyse Chelsea. They know that we're so anemic against the low block, and we just can't beat it. And that's why the coaching staff have got to drill this aggressively now. We've got to be in and behind players. We've got to be pushing it around. We've got to be moving more. And the movement is the, the key thing here. Like if we're not moving and moving into passing lanes, moving players around, drawing players out of the fence, then we're never going to score against the low block. It is that simple. We've just got to be more fluid and less stringent in our positional play which may end up being like a zonal approach. Like if you've got to mark a particular man or if you've got to be in a particular area, just be in that zone, but you don't have to be so, so strict with these things. Like I want players to be moving around. Cole Palmer personified that so well against Brentford. He was going deep. He was picking up the ball in sometimes like a right back area, centre back area and driving forward and then, you know, still ending up arriving in the box. And he still was the furthest forward. It's just, it's just mental. We need to have a few more players with the footballing intelligence of him and maybe the desire of him. And it's just not good enough. But look, these are just my ideas on how to solve the issues. I think those are four really good ways that we can solve a lot of our problems. And I have to say, with Poch coming out and keep saying about performances, 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 it's not about that anymore. We can't keep making the excuses. Brentford are an exquisitely drilled team. And Thomas Frank is a very, very good manager, underrated manager, actually. And we were way 
too bullish before that game and you know maybe we didn't give them the credit they deserve but also look let's be honest we've got to be beating teams this is Chelsea we've got to be beating teams in the low half of the league even below the top six and look let's be honest you know the performance against Arsenal was so good we should be beating teams in the top six as well so there just can't be any more excuses but look I want to know how you would solve these problems let me know in the comments below because to be honest with you I don't really know how to solve our problems beyond the four reasons that I gave there but look I'm really interested to see what you think let me know in the comments below and if you did like this video please do make sure you subscribe to the channel there's going to be lots more Chelsea content and look it's not going to be as depressing as it is now I think there are green shoots there and I think there is some positivity that we can draw from performances like yesterday but we just really need to improve and we need to improve quickly and before I go I just want to say thank you so much for all your support on the channel it's been absolutely brilliant I really appreciate all your comments your likes and all the people that have subscribed now we're nearly at 4,000 subscribers it means the absolute world to me thank you so so much and if you do want to support me as well make sure you check out avestday.co.uk the home of independent streetwear I'm wearing a brand new t-shirt by a called apparel today I think it's an absolute banger make sure you check it that out it's going to be a link in the description below thank you so so much for watching I'll see you in the next video